G'day guys, so as promised I've taken the clear see-through lock, the Sparrows training one, the acrylic, and I don't know if you can quite make out, I've taken the last two pins out because they are the highest cut, except for number one on this key, um, so it means that the full top pins are going to be sitting, as you can see, mostly down into the core. It's got a bit of a gap. Now, these pins that I've put in there are the floating, my camera will focus, floating wafer pins. So the back one, I have a serrated, well, it's got serration on it, and if you can make it out there, two round floating wafers. My camera will actually cooperate. Try and get up. You can see there's two just there. I'll turn it, try and keep it in focus. You'll see them slide down. Like that. Now they've dropped down the bottom there. And then that's the one in pin chamber five. And then in four is a spool. It's got a floating spool sitting in there. So as promised I'll show you how these go when they are picked so you can see exactly how these react and as you can see they're sitting down there down in the core. So let me go ahead I'll quickly pause this I'll mount my camera up in my old vice uh, old mount um, so I can get a nice close up on this lock so you can see how they go when it gets picked. So I'm um, just quickly do this and we'll be right back. Alright so as you can see I've got it mounted up pretty close in the vise there so you can see the two floating disc one in five and the spool in four. Now if I just quickly grab a pick I'll grab this one here and I go in, you can see, moving on chamber two, on chamber one. And then you can see chamber four, as I lift it. We've got the spool. And then you can see the two pin floating discs moving around on five. So, let me grab a top of the keyway tensioner from my kit here. Put top of the keyway tension in. I'm going to use light tension. And work our way around that bit of warding. Alright, so four springy, five is our binder. I'm trying to get on around that warding. A little bit of movement, but not much. I'm trying to do this without knocking this camera too much. I'm trying to do this looking through here. Alright, so... You can see... Alright, three was binding, two is still springy. I think I may have overset two. Chamber one was the next binder. All right, four is gets to there and then it starts to bind. I'll try five. As you can see, those discs on the back there are doing their job of catching because that is really bound up. Now I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on trying to lift that pin. I'm 
as you can see, I'm lifting the uh, lock out of the vise. There we go, got a click. So as you can see, it's dropped back down a bit. Alright, four is definitely set. Two is set. Oh, pin one dropped back down. So I've got to lift him until we get a click. There we go. Right. Four is still springy. And you can see those little discs doing their job of just hooking in to that shear line. Trying to get it to lift. Pin one to drop back down. All right, that was a good click out of five. Four steel springy. All right, definitely got five set that time. Four springy. Uh, let's click out of three. Two still springy, so it must be one. Uh, felt a slight turn on the core then. But still not open yet, so someone's still sitting down. That's it, I got one then. Now, four is our binder. And he is catching because there's a serration on the bottom. Definitely bound. And there we go, got an open. Alright, so as you can see, they do move around in between, and I'm trying to do this through the camera, in between the core and the Bible. Now imagine if you undercut or serrated or um, threaded the chambers of your core these would catch on a lot more um, same with the serrations up the top on pin 5 if that was if you did some threading or undercutting in your bible these would um, cause a lot more havoc than just in the end as you can see I'm trying to do this through the camera I literally have the camera that close to it I've not zoomed in at all um, but yeah, so that's how they go. You can see we got an open. So that's how the floating wafer pins react when you're trying to pick them in a lock. Now I'm just going to move this back up to my other mount. I'm not going to pause it this time. All right. So there you go, that's how the floating wafer pins 
React. So imagine if you uh, modified that, you'd be an absolute nightmare. So, as always, always follow the codes, keep Logsport legal, you know, don't go doing anything stupid. Um, if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. I try and make a few videos each week. I'm trying to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, and either Saturday or Sunday if I get time. Uh, come and join us on Discord at Extraordinary League of Pickers. I cannot recommend that enough. We're getting new members join all the time. Absolutely fantastic. Great way to learn new stuff and to meet new people. Uh, don't forget to come check us out on Instagram at Dark Arts Lock Picking. You can also find us on Facebook at Dark Arts Lock Picking and on Twitter at Dark Arts Lock. Um, if you'd like to get in contact with me, you can email darkartslockpicking at gmail.com and I'll get back to you or you can contact me on Discord, Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. And that pretty much wraps this one up. So, till next time, cheers, guys.